So, you want to know what treatments work for thinning hair? You're in the right place. Let's not waste time and cut to the actual content. Hey guys, I'm Dr. K. I'm a family and cosmetic doctor. And in today's video, I'm covering all of the hair loss treatments one by one and giving my professional opinion on whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Number one, castor oil. Jamaican black castor oil is often mentioned as a cure for thinning edges and hair loss. It's promoted as a way to thicken and boost your eyelashes and eyebrows too. Having used it myself for years, I can say very definitively that it didn't work for me. Wah, wah, wah. Castor oil just coats the hair strands making them appear shinier and healthier rather than stimulating new hair growth. Would I recommend it? Not as the main treatment for thinning hair, no. But if you're using it as part of your hair care regime to seal in moisture, then that should be fine. So overall for hair growth, castor oil gets a thumbs down. Number two. Minoxidil. Minoxidil or Rogaine is an approved medication for treating hair loss, specifically male or female pattern hair loss, which is also referred to as androgenetic alopecia. And it's available over the counter without a doctor's prescription in most countries. It comes in two strengths with a stronger version being targeted towards men. What else is new? Minoxidil is applied as a solution or as a foam directly to the scalp area where the hair loss is. Unlike castor oil, there is more research showing that it can help to restore hair growth. However, this comes with several warnings. The first of which is not to look at this as a quick fix because it isn't. Once you start using minoxidil, you have to use it for at least two months before you can see noticeable changes. The effect also tends to peak around four months, but it could take longer, up to 12 months in some people. The side effects of redness, stinging, and scalp sensitivity reactions around the area that you apply it to can also happen. It is also flammable, so you must keep your body away from open flames after you've used it on your scalp. If you're willing to put up with all of that, then research shows that it can help to produce some new growth of fine hair. However, it can't restore the full density of the lost hair as it was before. If you are one of the group that minoxidil works for and you're happy with its effect, unfortunately, it's not permanent and you have to continue using it in the long term in order to maintain your results. If you stop, then you will start to lose all the hair that you gained and be back to square one. So whilst minoxidil does have some benefits, in my opinion, it's not a long-term sustainable solution to treating hair loss. It may, however, be worth a try, especially before considering more expensive and drastic measures. So minoxidil gets a thumbs up as it does work under specific situations. Number three, spironolactone. Spironolactone is a prescription medication which has been used for youngs for treating high blood pressure, but is now being used increasingly as a treatment for hair loss. However, it's only really approved to treat hair loss caused by androgenetic alopecia. Spironolactone can only really be given by a private dermatologist and women of childbearing age must make sure that they're on effective birth control while taking it. A woman taking this medication should not become pregnant because spironolactone can cause genital abnormalities in male babies. Possible side effects also include weight gain, reduced sex drive, depression, and fatigue. Spironolactone gets a thumbs up from me, but only when used in specific circumstances. Number four, finasteride. Finasteride is a prescription medication that's FDA approved for the treatment of male pattern baldness. It is also known as Propecia or Proscar. Finasteride works by stopping testosterone from being converted so that it doesn't cause a hair follicle to shrink. It's been shown to be effective in men with alopecia. A side note is that finasteride is also used to treat prostate problems in men. Unfortunately, the FDA hasn't approved finasteride for use in women. And it should definitely not be used in women of childbearing age because just like spironolactone, finasteride can cause birth defects in male babies. However, research into its effects in women is ongoing and it's possible that a form of finasteride could be approved 
as a treatment for female pattern hair loss at some point in future. Another thing to bear in mind is that the effect of finasteride on the scalp will only last as long as the medicine is being taken. When you stop taking finasteride, any hair growth is lost. So finasteride gets thumbs up if you're a guy and thumbs down if you're a gal. Number five, platelet-rich plasma. Platelet-rich plasma or PRP injections have been used in the medical field for some time, but it first came into the public eye when it was popularized as a vampire facial on Kim Kardashian. Apart from its cosmetic and its anti-aging properties, it also shows some promising potential for stimulating hair growth and is now a commonly used treatment for hair loss. During the procedure, a sample of your blood is taken and spun around in a machine called a centrifuge, which separates the platelet-rich plasma from the rest of the blood. The platelet-rich plasma is then injected into areas of your scalp where you have thinning hair. Although there isn't a lot of research on how effective it is, it is thought to trigger hair growth by increasing blood supply to the hair follicle. PRP can strengthen existing hairs and thicken them. Unfortunately, PRP does not cause new hair to grow. That is something only a hair transplant can do. For people who are looking to not only stop the hair loss or have less severe problems, it's going to work a lot better than some of the other treatments I've previously mentioned. One of the main negatives of PRP injections is the cost. You will often need to have several treatments and this can be expensive with each session of PRP costing several hundred pounds. And given that the success rate from PRP is still uncertain, you will have to weigh up if it's worth it financially or if the better option would be to save up for a hair transplant. This is, in my opinion, still worth a thumbs up. As for the right person, it may still be worth it. Number six, hair transplant. Hair transplant surgery has always seemed to be such a drastic step, but in the last few years, it has become a more achievable treatment for many people struggling with hair loss. Unlike the other options I mentioned previously, hair transplant Transplantation can work for people who have permanent hair loss due to androgenetic alopecia, traction alopecia, or generalized thinning. A hair transplant is usually carried out under local anesthetic and sedation, which means you'll be awake but you won't be able to feel any pain. Hair is then taken from other areas of the scalp and then placed onto the areas of hair loss. After a few weeks, the transplanted hair will often fall out. New hair will usually start to appear after six months with the full results being seen within 12 to 18 months later. If you're considering a hair transplant, research is key. This is definitely a thumbs up because it works regardless of what type of hair loss you have. Number seven, caffeine shampoos. There are a lot of marketing claims about caffeine shampoos that it stimulates your scalp and helps with hair loss. But there is not enough evidence to prove that caffeine works in real life with hair on the scalp. Currently, the research is doubtful. In my opinion, this is a thumbs down as there's no credible evidence that these shampoos actually work. Obviously, if they work for you, then that's a different story. Number eight, biotin. Biotin, also known as vitamin B7, stimulates keratin production in hair and increases the rate of hair follicle growth. But here's the thing, despite the public perception that biotin supplements are helpful and effective for hair thinning, there is actually very little evidence that this is the case. Shocking? I know. A much better idea may be to look at what's causing hair thinning for you. Is it stress, a poor diet, an underlying health issue like a thyroid problem? If it is, then go get checked out for this rather than rushing to stockpile biotin supplements. So in my opinion, biotin supplements get a thumbs down. So there you go. What do you think about this list? Do you agree or disagree? And is there anything else that you've tried for hair growth? Let me know if so, and drop a comment below. If you made it to the end of this video, why not consider subscribing for more videos like this one? Make sure to give me a like, and I'll see you next time.